This episode of Because Science is brought to you by Skillshare. We just did a whole title crawl. You get it, it's a solo story. Now, when I claim that Han Solo is wrong about hyperspace, I'm questioning this very specific line from A New Hope when the rogue says this. Traveling through hyperspace ain't like dust and crops, boy. Without precise calculations, we'd fly right through a star or bounce too close to a supernova and that'd end your trip real quick, wouldn't it? Han is implying that without a charted course, there is a good chance they will hit something when jumping to or coming out of hyperspace, presumably because of the large distances traveled. The implication is that therefore a hyperspace jump cannot be random because of safety. But is that accurate? First, let's make some assumptions about the situation that we want to consider. Han Solo implies that if you calculate a course and then punch it, there's a very low percentage chance that anything bad will happen to you, like vaporizing inside of a supernova. We want to challenge that assumption. So let's assume that we are in empty space and we pick a completely random direction along a straight line to jump through somewhere in this galaxy, somewhere in this universe. If that has a chance of insta-death any higher than zero, we are gonna have to agree with Han. We don't wanna hear those odds. Next, we should specify the kinds of obstacles that we want to avoid during this blind jump. Now, empty space is the emptiest of all empties, but travel through it and your chances of hitting something eventually are 100%. Out here, there are still lonely atoms and cosmic dust and cosmic rays that all act to bring the effective speed limit for space travel, at least for humans, way down from the speed of light. For example, travel at just 30% the speed of light, and these hydrogen and helium atoms hanging out in the space between stars have enough energy, given the velocity at which they are hitting you, to give you a lethal dose of radiation in just one second. It's like standing next to that nuclear reactor that killed Spock, but worse. <laughs> Literally. And even if you could have some sci-fi shielding to protect you from these lonely atoms, there are still other forms of radiation that you have to worry about. The cosmic microwave background radiation, the ghostly photons left over, the glow from the Big Bang, would be shifted up into deadliness and they would have enough energy if you got right up to the edge of light speed, right before hyperspace, to completely vaporize you and your ship. Han YOLO! But the Millennium Falcon is a sci-fi spaceship, which probably has some sci-fi shielding to get around these obvious obstacles. So then, what are the chances of hitting what Han was worried about in the first place, in A New Hope? Stars. Well, to know that, we need to know the stellar density, or how many stars are in a certain volume of space. Near our sun, that value is 0.14 stars per cubic parsec. And as we all know, one parsec. Laser sword, uh, laser sword. Laser as we sword. all know, one parsec is equal to 3.26 light years, an enormous distance. This stellar density is our first indication that during a trip through space, you may not see anything at all, let alone hit something. Oh, with the blast shield down, I can't even see. How am I supposed to, ow, ow. Once you really understand just how far apart stars are, it starts to make more and more sense to shoot first and make calculations later. <laughs> Imagine all of the space in our solar system inside of a giant sphere, with the radius of that sphere being the distance between the sun and the last planet Neptune. Now, according to Han Solo, you might think that if you flew through an entire solar system's worth of volume, you'd have a pretty good chance of hitting something like a star or bouncing too close to a supernova. But again, because of stellar density, 
This just isn't the case in space. You'd have to fly through five. 160 billion solar system volumes before you encountered just a single star. If you imagine a cube with the sides equal to one Kessel run, about 12 parsecs, an almost unimaginable volume, and I can imagine quite a bit, you'd still only find 24 stars. I think you get the idea. So to calculate the actual chances of flying through a star like Han is worried about, we're gonna use a concept called the free mean path. The free mean path is a principle in nuclear physics and chemistry that estimates the average distance a particle can travel inside of a volume filled with other particles before that particle hits something. Now, if we model our space like a volume filled with particles that we don't want to hit, stars, then knowing a little bit about those stars, like their radii and the volume that we are traveling through space, we can estimate the average distance that the Millennium Falcon could go through space before it hit anything. And if that distance is small, then Han is right, and we need some precision. But if those distances are very large, then we should encase this idea in carbonite and shelve it. <laughs> nice try. Surprise! So here is our model of space, and here is the mean free path equation. We already know the particles per unit volume, that's the stellar density, so we need the cross-sectional area of the things that we don't want to hit, stars. In this way, it's kind of like evaluating every slice of volume that we pass through to see if we'll hit anything, like flying through a giant cosmic salami while avoiding all of the marbling. Anyway, assuming that the radii of these stars is close to the radius of our sun, the average distance that the Millennium Falcon could travel before it hit anything star-sized is four. You know what I'm gonna do. Quadrillion parsecs. According to our math, you could sit down at the Millennium Falcon's controls, ignore the computer, and then make a blind jump to hyperspace, and you would cross the entire observable universe before you hit anything. Don't tell old threeps over there, but the chances of successfully navigating the universe blind are one to one. Our math says that you could make the jump to hyperspace with your eyes closed, but our math depends on our assumptions. Am I, am I steering? What if we are simply wrong about the stellar density where Han is making that quote? What if Han is near the core of the galaxy far, far away, where stellar density could be millions of times higher? Okay. Let's set some parameters. If the mean free path for the Millennium Falcon is less than a single Kessel run, we'll have a problem. Even if we make the radii of our stars that we don't want to hit 2,000 times larger, which would make them larger than any known stars, and increase our stellar density by 100 million times, which is a stellar density higher than most galaxies' cores, we still get a mean free path value, how far the Millennium Falcon could travel before it hit anything, roughly equal to an entire Kessel Run. These calculations extend to other apparently dangerous situations in the Star Wars universe, too. Remember how treacherous it was to navigate that asteroid field in The Empire Strikes Back? Well, the average distance between large asteroids, at least in our own galaxy, can be a million kilometers, and it's at least thousands of kilometers for smaller asteroids. Which means, go back to that scene and look out the window, realistically speaking, you wouldn't see this. You would see this. As long as you weren't being shot at, you could get cocky and take your hands off the controls. We calculated that you could pick a random straight path through space, make a hyperspace jump, and cross the entire galaxy without hitting anything. But space is even emptier than this. Using our originally calculated mean free path, you find that you could make the Kessel Run almost 400 trillion times before you flew through anything like a star. You could cross an entire galaxy if the galaxy far, far away is close to the size of the Milky Way 150 billion times. You could smuggle your way across the entire observable universe 158,000 times and with perfectly imprecise calculations be totally fine. 
The chances that you would be obliterated during a Han Yolo hyperspace jump by a star or a supernova are, if we round just a bit, zero. So was Han Solo right? Is it really that dangerous to make an imprecise jump to hyperspace because of your chances of hitting a star or supernova? No, it's actually the exact opposite. Space is so big that you could point the Millennium Falcon in a random straight line path anywhere in space, and chances are you would leave the galaxy to cross the entire observable universe without hitting anything star or supernova sized. It sounds depressing, the emptiness, but the emptiness also makes all the matter that is in the universe already matter that much more. Just think of it. I could cross the entire universe without running into anything at all, let alone anything special, like all of you, or all of, I'm getting kind of all mushy on you. Random hyperspace jumps are fine because science did it. You know, if the galaxy far, far away was different from our own, then something, oh! Oh, Chewy, I don't feel so good. Oh, I fell off a bridge. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's episode of Because Science. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 17,000 classes in design, photography, and more. Premium members get unlimited access so that you can keep learning, find inspiration, and take on new projects whenever you want. Download the mobile app on Android and iPhone and tap into classes even when you are offline. The first 500 people to sign up at skl.sh slash because science will get a free two month trial. That's skl.sh slash because science and the first 500 people will get two months free. So get there quick, shoot first. Thank you so much for watching, Sam. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing on Facebook and YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, hit that notification bell because we do a lot of other nerdy stuff that you can get involved with right here on this channel. If you want more of me, check out Muskwatch ah, back on Nerdist.com or the space program at projectalpha.com where if you sign up now for a free 30-day trial, you can get this main show two days earlier than anyone else, which is great. And follow Because Science and me over here at those.